Okay, so here is the uh, new test device that I'm working on, which is a part of an idea that uh, Floor has inspired me on, but I've taken it further and made it into a uh, rotary um, device. So um, basically we are working with a magnet that's in this dimension and then in this dimension here. And I'll bring you over to this view here. So basically what Flora was showing is that you can slide the magnet that is in this dimension or oppositely that one could be slid okay which that's I think that's what he was showing this one was fixed and he was sliding this one but I've gone the other way around so I have this one here that's sliding in and out and this action is fairly easy to do but yet this magnet here has a very strong uh, amount of uh, push of, of torque if you want um, a force so there's a very strong force uh, right here on this dimension and I will show you that I'll use my scale here and uh, I have that magnet on a slider there so there you see the uh, slider completely uh, on the bearings there and on the bearings there and uh, start up the scale and right there I have a small uh, scale there in millimeters and uh, I could uh, measure the uh, travel that this uh, arm does and it basically does exactly 11 millimeters from 0 to 11 millimeters and uh, I'm going to put this scale on there now and show you how much uh, force we've, we're talking about here So I'll have to reset that. The scale sometimes uh, zeroes itself here. Let me see, or locks. Okay, so there you see over, over 500 grams uh, of uh, force there. And uh, I was just slightly pushing, pushing on it there. So it just locked on that. So we have 555 grams. In average, I figured uh, between the stroke about uh, 538 to 540 uh, grams of uh, force. <clears throat> so uh, where I went further with this is basically I realized that when you flip one of the polarities of this, the force that is experienced on this side when you have another magnet uh, with a different polarity, which I have here, and I've mounted it on a wheel, and when I bring the other polarity in, you'll see that this moves now on the opposite side. So now we're, we're on the zero now at side. And now you see the magnet has traveled onto this side and now the force is on this side. So basically what's amazingly exciting about this device is basically I've now have a motion happening back and forth with a wheel and I have 12 magnets on this now you're seeing also that there is a uh, opening between the magnets uh, I figured this was actually the most efficient instead of having one magnet uh, north-south north-south uh, next to each other so uh, that uh, needs to be there if not the uh, pull force to pull uh, this magnet out and the other one in I just found that it seemed to be like much much greater and with this it just turns like nothing you could turn this very easily and yet the force of this here always seems to be constant so that's what's uh, very uh, interesting about this so I have done a uh, setup here where I've calculated everything I've got a little red marker here and uh, I have a scale on this side here which I slide as well on another uh, chart here and do the measurements and basically I've measured uh, a complete stroke which means uh, there is obviously a little bit of pull force to pull this in here okay so let's say this I would lock this in this position and now see it's pushing it's repelling 
So you really want to have this pulled uh, into this location here and that's when maximum force is then exerted over to the other side as you see there. Because uh, if you only have it at this point, it's very feeble. But when you get to here, that's the maximum transfer, right? And it pushes over. And then when it's over onto the other side, then you have to pull it out. There's a little bit of force to pull out. So I've used the worst case scenario, basically uh, the need of extra power, you know, a pull force to pull that uh, magnet in, and a little bit of extra as well for well, actually even more to pull it out because there's a little bit of a sticky spot. And then compared uh, my distance of travel here, the amount of grams that you saw here, compared to the amount of uh, pull uh, to do pull the wheel. And how I did that is I have this really long um, shaft here that I made that attaches there and then attaches to uh, my scale here, right there. And then I would slide the scale and I was using uh, basically uh, 110 uh, millimeters, as you see there. Uh, this goes up to 110 millimeters, so this would be lined up there, and that's where I would start. And I would pull, uh, doing those two uh, ins and outs, basically to here. So I would have actually 22 samples. I would take a sample at every 5 uh, millimeters and write that data down. So this would be to pull it all the way in, and once that's done, then I would release this uh, magnet, Okay, and onto that side, obviously I had about, like I showed you here, about 500, over, around 540 grams, okay, of um, action going throughout the whole uh, 11 millimeters of stroke here. Okay, and then um, the next cycle would be to continue and then pull that out, okay, of that spot so that now you're reset and ready for the next magnet. That would be the full cycle. So basically the great thing about this is it's already done in a way where once that cycle is done, it's reset and ready for the next cycle. There is no other uh, power to put in to getting it ready for the next cycle. So this device has built-in reset and that is excellent. I will show you the uh, data here. So uh, this is what we're looking at. So it's very, very small amount of grams. So the first uh, two um, five millimeter uh, cycles were nothing. I couldn't measure anything on the scale. And then 25 grams, 35, uh, 40, you know, on and on and on. And back, we get to zero. That's basically when it's lined up and ready to flip over to the other side, delivering the uh, 540 uh, grams uh, of pull force during that uh, 11 millimeter uh, stroke. Then you are now needing to pull the uh, magnet out, okay, to get it ready for the uh, basically the reset, okay. So uh, it starts at zero again to pull it out, and then you can see that the reset here you needs a little bit more uh, gram force, okay, and get that out to zero. And then you're up to the next magnet to do the flip cycle, and there's no uh, power, uh, no, uh, nothing needed to input there uh, from to get to the next cycle. So um, the average <coughs> input was 33.64, uh, so 33 grams, 34 grams, call it that if you want, okay, uh, of input. Now that was traveling over a distance of 110 uh, millimeters, okay. So if I want to compare it to my input, which was only 11 millimeters, I would have to multiply this by 10. So we have uh, 336 um, grams, okay? Uh, if I want to e uh, compare my uh, input uh, amount of uh, force compared to my output force. So as you see, we have uh, 336 grams, okay, of input uh, force that we needed to put in to make a complete cycle, including the reset. And, uh, but we got 538, I put it 538 there, of uh, output. And basically if you take uh, the difference between the two, 
we have actually a 60% gain. That is the highest gain that I've ever uh, achieved yet. Plus, keep in mind, this is, as far as I'm concerned, with reset. So we have an extra of 60% and I'm just totally blown away uh, by how simple uh, my uh, concept has come up to be and showing this incredible gain. So uh, hopefully uh, most of everyone can follow uh, what my reasoning is here and how I went about to measuring it and hopefully there's no measurement error and I don't believe there is. Uh, there you go. Very, very interesting. Thanks. Bye now.